Hello, welcome to Richby's Life's Adventures. Now in this weekend's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to build a bed for the back of the van. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to anchor to the side of the van with some rivnuts and make some little brackets. I'll say little, they're going to be quite large. Uh, and then we're going to straddle them brackets with some probably 50mm by 50mm wood, which should be quite strong. It should be strong enough then not to require any supporting legs underneath. That's my goal anyway. If we have to put some supporting legs on it, we'll incorporate them with the cupboards that go under the van, under the bed rather. So Debbie's in charge of supplying me with beers and food and the bills and all the payments and all the budget for this van. Uh, she's doing a good job at that. Uh, I'm going to get cracking on doing this bed and I'll show you what I'm doing, so stay tuned. All right, we're going to make a start on doing the bed. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mount a strip on here, a strip of steel and a strip of steel on here. And we're going to rivet nut it to that and rivet nut it to that. So it, it will sit on that and hold it back on that. Um, and then I'll mount a, a box section steel, weld it to the metal strips that I put on cut to that shape and I'll do three of those and then where the grab handle was here you can just feel the hole I'll cut that little hole out and there'll be a tapped hole there already for where the grab handle was and there's the same on that side you can just see the dimple where I found the hole that'll have a little leg on it and another steel bar coming across to this side because I'm gonna have the bed coming right up to the back doors as close to the back doors as I can to maximize the room in the van uh, and that will support the back end of the bed. So there'll be four braces in total. I think that's going to be ample enough. Uh, and then going in between each box section steel, I'll just use timber. Uh, I think steel will be a bit heavy. Um, plus if it bends, it, stay, it stays bent, as where wood flexes and bends back. Um, the goal is not to put any structural legs underneath. And I think... Putting it on here will give it some support on there and on there and it'll anchor and sit quite nice. So I've made this template out of insulation. So the box section steel will sit on the metal bars that I put going vertically, uh, horizontally rather, and it will sit like that. So I've made the template for cutting my steel work. So now I'm going to get cutting the steel work. Right, whenever you're cutting steel, glasses is a must. It's going to create lots of sparks. I'll put gloves on for belts and braces, just because I'm dealing with hot metal and sharp metal. So I've measured the width of the window pod, and I want it 39 inches on the top rail, and then the one that goes on the vertical face that wants to be 44 inches. I'm going to do it a bit longer so that I can put an extra rib nut in either end just to give it a bit more structural strength. So I've marked it there, 39 inches. This one is 30mm bar and then on the um, vertical face I've got 40mm bar uh, and it's 8mm thick steel so it should have quite a bit of uh, structural strength with it. So I've measured that out, now I'm going to get ready for cutting. So, cover your ears. going to measure the other one out and do another one for the other side. Might as well set the equipment up to do both sides at the same time. Now I'm going to mark it square uh, as well. The chop saw will do it square anyway but at least I know if I mark it square I'll know if the chop saw is staying square.
uh, two bits now for my uh, angled back piece that goes in the window pod and then I've got a bit left over like I said for them leg bits that will have the steel going from side to side that will go against the back doors so I'll keep that and I'll do that bit last so that's that that's them two now I just need to do the 44 inch length bits for the other side I'm just going to double check this measurement of 44 inches definitely 44 inches it can be any size really, I'm just, because that would be angled, angled back, the other one will come out a bit longer, so I've put an extra rivet in there, so I can have one on there, space them out, and then there's only so long I can go with this, that's where the, the vertical face, I can go pretty much as long as I want. Now I need to get onto the um, cutting of the box steel. Now this is my box steel, it's quite heavy duty, but it's only going to be two and a half to three inches long. Just enough to cut the angle in and it still has some structural strength and I'm going to cut the end top off so it becomes a U channel. Um, and then the wood big thick timber wood will sit in there um, and I'll get some I don't know two by two or two by three wood and that'll become my bed frame um, it's probably all a little bit overkill but I'm not the smallest of chaps and I don't want to have to remake it make it once make it good so um, cut this wrapping off and I'll get scribing it out. I only bought a short length because like I said they're only going to be two and a half to three inches long. So as long as I can get uh, six out of this piece, uh, doesn't leave me any room for error. So I think six, six out of that is going to be tight going anyway. So if I make a mistake I'll have to order some more. Okay this box section I've marked it out to 70, 70, um, 70 mil intervals. That keeps this box section to a minimum whilst keeping at least sort of um, 50 mil for the timber battens to sit on. So that gives a decent platform for that to sit on. So I'm going to make a start and cutting that. <laughs> okay, so that's that cut. So I've got to cut a diagonal down there and then a straight down there and then that'll give me that shape there then for it to sit on today. So that's one, another five to go. Okay, so I've cut all my six cubes if you like. Uh, you don't have to go through some of these discs in this thicker gauge steel. Um, that's one. The one that's in it's not far off being this size. It all breaks down to this carbon material uh, that's the size they should be it wears it out quite quick uh, so luckily enough I've got crap loads of these I don't think they're overly expensive I think you buy a pack of 10 for 15 quid 20 quid something like that so that's them done um, I'll scribe out my angle of my vertical uh, and then I'll cut them out and then once I've got it all cut out I'll go around linishing it and deburring it all and then I'll go on to marking them where they want to be on the bars then I'll make a start on the tack welding now I've got a nice little arc welder I don't profess to be a welder I don't profess to be any sort of welder, let alone arc welder. Uh, I am a bit better at MIG welding, but unfortunately I haven't got a MIG welder. But um, I think if I warm my arc welding rods up, I have got a rod warmer. Now, 
this 40 mil is 8 mil. I think this box section, that's about 8 mil as well. So at least I can get equal penetration, I can put equal heat into each bit without it risking blowing through one bit and not the other. That's the difficulty in welding when you get two different thicknesses of steel and you've got to try and form them together. At least I'm working with the same thickness. So that's good. So I'll make a start on, I'll have a little bit of a clear up first and I'll make a start on marking these out. Okay, so I've transferred that angle on that insulation onto steel, onto one of the off cuts of steel because otherwise every time I scribe that, because it's soft, it's going to get a different angle and a different pattern. So I've scribed it onto this, so now when I clamp it on there, it shouldn't really wear out and I'll get the same scribe every time because it's just going to be more stable material. So I'll get scribing and then I'll start, um, start cutting them out. So I'm just drilling near the holes, then I'll give it a lick of paint. Um, excuse my table, I've used it for all sorts. It's, a, it's an old caravan table out of uh, a caravan I had donkeys years ago. I've used it as a workbench for many years, as you can tell. But anyway, um, I'm going through drilling it. It's quite thick steel, so I'm oiling it, though it's air tools, oil's oil for drilling. Uh, going through, drilling the holes, then I'll give it a, uh, I'll put the holes in the side then for the rivnuts. I'll just show you what I'm doing there. What I do is I slip this bit of pipe over the drill bit, then that stops me going through too far and drilling through the side of the van. Um, I think I've got about 100 mil to play with, but um, if I do that, it gives me, what, 20 mil. Just make, make sure it don't run away with it and I puncture a hole in the side of the van. Um, so that's it. I'll show you when I give it a lick of paint and get it fitted. Here we go. I think some seagulls or pigeons came down. Did some shit welding all over the place. Like I said, my welding skills are terrible, especially with arc welding. Me, I'm not too bad. But arc welding, I just cannot master. Now, if my dad was still around, he would have whipped this thing together like it was nobody's business. So, that's that. It doesn't look wide enough for a double bed, like I said. But there is another bracket going on the back. So, let me just lift this up in place and I'll show you where it's going to go. So that's where it's going to go, just there. I've got a riv nut it to the side. And then there'll be another bracket in that dimple, which will take the weight then over past um, where it wants to be. So that's, um, that's my bracket. I've just got to replicate that now for the other side one. There you go, all fitted. I've got the other one, the other side. Just need to um, paint it, get it fitted. And then this will line up with the bracket that comes off there for the other end of the bed. So it should be 135-ish. One, um, if the bed slats overhang a bit because of the wall there for the cupboard and that, I can just put a batten along there and then the final end will just sit on the battens. But that's absolutely solid. Eight mil rivnuts with eight mil bolts. Um, show you the bolts I've got. Uh, they've got like a, a funny sort of backed head on them so that they won't shake loose. So here we go, I've torqued all the bolts up to 40 newton metres. Uh, I didn't dare go much tighter than that, I think that's plenty tight enough. Um, they're only riv nuts at the end of the day. So um, that's all torqued up, nice and tight. Uh, it's absolutely solid to the vehicle. My next purchase now is to find some wood that fits within that little box section and that'll go across to the other side. Um, and like I said, that that dimple there, they have a, another little short 
leg on it and then I'll do a box section steel I don't know, probably 20 mil just coming all the way along that bit will be steel all the way across um, and then that will give me a little bit then to put a face of the bed on So I've got the wood beams going across. Now they're slightly narrower, wider rather than the, um, I couldn't find any, the right width and height. So I've had to notch out to fit that in there and it's absolutely solid. Made this bar. Now the hole that was in there for the, the grab rail that is going into this. So what I've done is I've slotted this. So it goes in, slots into there. I'll put a bolt in with the head cut off and then rib nutted a second bolt down there in the same, that end. You just see the slot that I've put in there that goes all the way up in there. So the bolt again sticks out there sticks out there by about an inch and it sits on that for load bearing this one just stops it from rotating so realistically there's two fixings per end so that's all painted that leg's welded on it's absolutely solid so now i've got to start cutting these battens at 135 distance uh, this first one i've angled to the same angle as the back of that and that'll sit in tight against these shoulders so that'll sit like that leaving a small very small gap and then these will start going with about inch and a quarter gap between each one and they'll go all the way across to create the full width of the bed uh, been and bought the mattress from Ikea. It's a full full memory foam mattress. Uh, £179, I think, £180-ish. Um, need to cut that to length because it's 190 centimetres. That's what I think the width of the van is, 185, 186 centimetres. So I'm going to have to cut that down. And then also... I'm going to bring the mattress round this so it comes to the end of this and then the wood for the end of the bed will stick up like that. So I need to trim the mattress down afterwards to the length, to the right length and to the shape of this corner. Um, first though, I need to paint the underside of the thing because I, I couldn't paint it all without making it a mess on the top. So now I've got it bolted in, I can paint the underside. Um, I'll get that painted and then start cutting these battens. There's quite a few battens. Here we have it, got all the bed slats on. Looks pretty good. I've just got to trim that last one off. I forgot to trim it off before I screwed it in. But um, yeah, it's pretty good. So, what I've got to do is, it is a little bit weak, 
Um, I don't think it'll hold my weight. It'll hold Debbie's, but not mine on the fat sod. So what I'm going to do is incorporate leg bracing. Um, into the cupboard. So the initial parameter will be made out of this this side's timber in just to act some structural strength across this end and then I'll have the same on the gas locker end. So the initial pillar will be this stronger stuff and that'll give it because then it's only got support from there to there on its own, which would be fine. That'd be nice and strong. Um, and then it'll look like there's no legs on it once it's cladded in, I think, 9 mil ply. Um, it has got to hold the batteries up high. So I might even do 12 mil ply cupboard. Um, at the top, because I'm going to totally seal it off so none of the electrics is open to the elements, apart from like a cupboard door. Uh, if I need to put a hole with vents and PC fans on the electrics cupboard I might have to do that um, so we'll see how that goes so my next bit is to build a cupboard for the electrics um, and then trimming the mattress will be the last thing before we go away to Wales um, with crafty blinders and chasmers um, because I don't want the mattress to get dirty, so that'll be one of the last things I trim down and install. Uh, I'll do a separate video on trimming that down. It won't be a very long one. I'll probably use a uh, electric knife, uh, or I'll see if I can hook up and manufacture a an electric hot wire because uh, it is foam. It'll just cut through it easier. But I'll see what I can do. I'll see how well it cuts with a knife. But that'll be. Um, not this weekend, probably next weekend. This weekend will be the flooring and the cupboard. And that'll give a nice, nice finish then. Um, the cupboard will come up to about here and then it, it'll have a, a standoff coming all the way along there and then it'll be down again. So this end bit will be done in one piece of wood just to give it a nice effect. And then I'll try and route her in grooves again to try and make it look like tongue groove um, I'll see how well that comes out and then it, again it'll be painted in eggshell white um, I think it'll look quite nice then um, and then that pipe there will let, come out into the gas locker just to make that pipe safe so that it, like I said if it does leak it'll be in the gas locker there'll be a drop out vent in the floor so it'll just leak into the cupboard and out the drop end vent. Hopefully there's no leaks, but you've got edge on the side of caution. So that about wraps up the bed manufacture. So that about wraps up the bed build. Next, we're gonna make a start on doing the flooring. Once the flooring's in, then we can make a start on doing the gas and electrics cupboard and maybe make a start on doing the gas cupboard. Uh, if you like what you've seen, please like, please subscribe, and please share. And if you really feel like it, hit that little bell icon, and you'll get to see all our future videos. And on that note, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.